Welcome to the Connect with County Leaders podcast with your host, Brian Hill. Hello and welcome to Connect with County Leaders. I'm Brian Hill. On this edition, I am very, very excited to have with us Tony Skin, the new, let me say that again, the new head basketball coach at George Mason. Coach, welcome to Connect with County Leaders Podcast. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I uh, appreciate you having me on. This is uh, definitely um, something I've been looking forward to uh, coming to, so I appreciate you having me. Well, Coach, I'm going to give a quick little overview of you, and then we're going to get a quick conversation. Now, you are a former George Mason team member. You played professionally where? Uh, so I played three years. Um, my first stop was in France for three years in a pro A league. And then I went to Italy in their first division my fourth year. And then Germany my fifth year. Um, Israel my sixth year. And was on my way to uh, the Ukraine before eventually getting um, hurt in the Olympics in 2012. So Now, yep. we're going to talk about the Olympics because you are Olympian. <laughs> yeah. And you played for which country? Team Nigeria. Team Nigeria. And you are one of two coaches born in the continent of Africa. There's mm-hmm. also another coach. Do you know where he's from? Well, yes, I do now. Yeah. Yeah. My, you know, my, my, my great <laughs> SID informed me of that information. And, and in just finding that out, it's, you know, obviously I knew that I was in, you know, small company. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it being put out to, uh, you know, fruition is definitely an opportunity and something that, um, you know, it's special. Yeah. It's special. So Stan Johnson, and yeah. I know the reason why I know that it was two African coaches, obviously knowing you personally, but mm-hmm. our, our poli- uh, sorry, our fire chief is mm-hmm. John Butler from Liberia. Okay. Stan Johnson is also from Liberia. Liberia so, yeah. so well, and, you know, he, he thinks he's, John Butler thinks he's the man because he knows the president Stan. of Liberia too. So it's yeah, all good. Yeah. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll have John on the show later to talk about that. Now, you also were assistant coach at Seton Hall, mm-hmm. Ohio State. Mm-hmm. And the University of Maryland. So yep, tell yep, me but, about your experiences in Essex County, New Jersey, uh, Franklin County, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Check that out. I yeah, even know Frank, where that yeah, is. You're a county guy. Hey, hey, hey. And <laughs> Prince George's <laughs> County, Maryland. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think before we even get to that, I can't forget where I started, which mm-hmm. was um, at Louisiana Tech. Oh, okay. You know, Eric, Eric Conkle, who was the assistant or at least one of the assistants on that George Mason team that, um, believe it or not, he was actually one of the first ones that recruited me. Okay. Doesn't get a lot of credit for it. Um, but he was that guy that, you know, got me committed to George Mason. Um, and he was also the same guy that gave me my first coaching opportunity as I transitioned. So Louisiana Tech was actually my first stop. Um, and Ruston, Louisiana is a different place, but, you know, it gave me, especially around some of the guys that I had the chance to work with mm-hmm. um, my first couple of years, it gave me the opportunity to just kind of learn on the fly, um, which then created the opportunity um, for me to go um, to Seton Hall in, you know, they say South Orange, New Jersey, but it's a little different, a little bit bigger than just South Orange, yeah, right? Is, you know right. that. Um, but it gave me an opportunity to go there to go work for um, Coach Willard, who, you know, is one of the best people on earth and one of the best coaches in the country. Um, from there, I transitioned. I didn't want to leave Seton Hall because we had a really, really good thing rolling, and I knew he was probably on the cusp of of transitioning himself, but you know, when you get a call from a big-time program like Ohio State, which um, Chris Holtman gave me, it's just hard to say no to that opportunity. Um, and so I had a chance to go there. I wasn't planning on leaving. Right. Um, but, again, that's the business. These things happen all the time. Different doors open, and Kevin Willard ends up getting the Maryland job. And, you know, as soon as he called me, like, I knew what it was. And, um, you know, Coach Holtman at Ohio State, he supported it coming back home. And, you know, one thing leads to another, and then 10 months later, George Mason opens <laughs> up, and here we are. Yeah, well, we're, we're happy to have you. But now, you know, I, I, I've, I've kind of misstepped here because I want to go back to the Olympics. Yep. I want to know your, what you consider to be your most or your best moment in the 2012 Olympics before you were getting injured. Uh, you know what? It, I would say um, it was the process in getting there. Mm-hmm. You know, for, for, for one— I kind of went hidden a little bit as a Nigerian. You know, Anthony Skin is not your typical Nigerian name. Um, but once word got out, you know, I was playing well in Europe. And once word got out, you know, I started getting the invites to, you know, different training camps. And, you know, I would say for three or four years, I would go to training camp and then I would just back out because mm-hmm. it, was, it was just really, it's really hard to get an Olympic berth, um, especially in African nation. 
um, especially with Nigeria, always up and down in just logistics and different things and different guys that can get on board. And so when I committed to um, going to Venezuela, which was the, the qualification games, for me it was, uh, you know what, let me just go do something during the summer. Um, I didn't plan on winning the you know ticket that would right. get us there. And so I would say losing to Venezuela in game one, they were the host. And, you know, everything is pool play in these games. Right. And when you lose that first game, you, you kind of start packing your stuff. I mean, and one thing led to another. Um, we won our last three games. And the way that the other teams kind of won and lost, it put us into the perfect position of playing um, the Dominican Republic for that last ticket. And the irony of that was the head coach there was uh, – who was the head coach? I don't know. Let me drop the ball now. It's Calipari. For the Dominican Republic? For the Dominican Republic. Really? Yes. Was he a one and done then too? No, well, so he, he got, I think he got, you know, quite a bit of money to coach that team, but then also in return to get um, uh, Carl Anthony Towns to go to Kentucky. True, true So I true. think that was part of, that was all yeah. part of the recruiting too. So anyways, um, that, came, that game got down to the wire. And again, we were the underdog. We weren't supposed to make it to that tournament. We weren't supposed to beat Venezuela. I'm sorry, to win that pool out of Venezuela. Mm -hmm. But we did it. And I would say punching that ticket was probably more elating than actually playing in the Olympics. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. At least, that was, you weren't supposed to be there. Yeah, you just weren't supposed yeah, to be okay. there. And so it was just one of those things where um, once we got there and, you know, you just kind of went through the day to day and, you know, being in the Olympic vi Village, all those experiences were, I would say, neck to neck. But to actually accomplish something like mm -hmm. that that had never been done um, as a country, we're known for football. Yeah. Soccer. Yeah. Soccer. Yeah. Um, but to finally accomplish that um, in a game of hoops, it was, you know, I would say that was it. You know, that response was not what I expected to hear from you because, you know, going back and looking at some of the tape. Yeah. Of when I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would have thought you would have said, you know, when I when I went at it with James Harden and I, I put it on him. I mean, that to me, I mean, that's when James Harden was actually skinny. Yeah, well, you know what? I always tell people this, man. It's uh, That was a great play, a great move. But as a competitor and even more now as a coach, most people weren't paying attention to the score. Yeah. That's, we, yeah. we were down by 50. Oh, yeah. man. So, I, I wasn't going to say that, but I'm going to yeah, tell you. So, and for me, it's, it's one of those things, too. That's, things happen uh, for a reason. Um, unfortunately, that was like my outro out the game <laughs> because I ended up getting hurt, and yeah. it was it was a career-ending yeah. injury the following game. game. Yeah. Um, so God must have known that that was going to be one of my last possessions, and you know He gave me something that was you know to remember, and I still to this day I can't I can't get rid of it. I don't need to talk about it. You know, some coach or some player is going to bring it up, and yeah. if they don't bring it up, somehow my staff shows it. And then everybody starts looking at the room out in the room and saying, "Oh, that was him." Yeah. So, so go up, everybody. <laughs> I want everybody to go on to YouTube, and 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 you know, just put in Tony Skin jacking up James Harden. That <laughs> that right there was a was a classic move for me. Um, but you were also a member of the 2006 Final Four team here in uh, Fairfax County, uh, yeah. George Mason. Yeah. Uh, that must have been an excellent. Excellent time. Unfortunately, I was in South Carolina watching mm, you guys play. Mm. But, you know, when you think back on that team, what made it such a special team? I think, and you hear this all the time, you know, this is the common um, conversation in most locker rooms, you know, brotherhood. Mm -hmm. um, now that I've gone through it as a player in different teams, different, you know, countries, gone through it as a coach in different programs, different levels, you know, I always go back to that 2006 yeah. team. And I don't know if, if it's because we were all from the DMV and so we shared, you know, different things together. But there was – it was a real special group. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll even use my example. You know, Gabe Norwood, who I think people remember, he was a hell of a player. He was a hell of a teammate. Mm -hmm. um, I was suspended for the first game of the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, we qualify for the NCAA tournament. We get in that large bid. No one's expecting us to beat Michigan State. Um, and I'm sitting on the bench, you know, clenching my fist like, oh, we can actually win this game. You know, cheering on my teammates. And those guys obviously performed and did something great and gave me an opportunity um, to be able to play the next game right. against North Carolina. But the one thing that always stands out to this day was 
you know, before I could even get to those guys, Gabe Norwood, who stepped into my place um, as a starter, you know, he went and wrote on the board, you know, Tony is back. And I think about that all the time because that just doesn't happen. Right. You know, right. especially in a, in, in a competitive sport that we play, it's always next man up. And if you're able to make the most of that, you're not necessarily telling the next man that you just took his spot. <laughs> like, you can have your spot back. And so that always um, – I always remember back to that, and, you know, that's the kind of group that we were. Yeah. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just a, a one-game thing. We were like that that whole season. And if you look at our season as well as we did in the NCAA tournament, we had a pretty good season that year. and We were a really, really good team yeah. from a statistical standpoint defensively. We were always on the same page. And so, you know, that brotherhood is what it was in 06. And believe it or not, it's still the same. You know, my phone is – we have a group chat. And every time I put my phone down, I got to catch up to 100 messages, you know, with uh, my former teammates. So it was I'm a look, special group. I'm looking forward to meeting uh, some of your former teammates. I, I, I will say this. On your staff, you have Lamar Butler, who yep. was on that team. Yes, he was. And and following— uh, um, um, On the other side of campus, following Campbell. Following Campbell. Yeah. I'm, and I'm sorry for messing his last name up because when you see his first name, the first name I can get. Yeah. I don't understand why I can't say Campbell, but following <laughs> is a crazy dude. Um, we, we compare watches when we see each yeah, other. So. I heard that exchange the other day. I didn't understand what was going on, but now I do. Yeah, yeah. So um, so tell me, you, you, you're, you're going to play a different style of basketball. You're going you're, you're gonna to bring the Tony Skim experience to Fairfax County, to George Mason. Explain to me, what is, what is your style going to be this year? I mean, you know, it's, um, I think that's the easiest thing to answer just because as a player, um, as a coach, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen – some of the things I liked, um, and I've seen some of the things I didn't like. Um, but I've also found, found the middle ground of what I think the expectation is, especially in the DMV. Mm -hmm. um, and, and bottom line, that just comes down to um, playing with freedom, um, playing as much as possible at this level, uh, positionless basketball, and playing up-tempo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, up-tempo can be misleading because you think that there's no um, rhyme or reason for whatever reason that is. But we're going to have that, but we're going to also have that freedom and that autonomy offensively. But it will be predicated um, off of our defense because okay. we are going to press. Um, I've, we had a ton of success um, at Seton Hall and at Maryland Press. And I remember when we took the job last year, and um, I won't say any names, but Kevin Willard went out to the Big Ten Conference and a certain coach told him that you, you can't win in this league by pressing. Right. Um, you know, safe to say in year one, we did pretty good job yeah, impressing. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that I definitely want to bring back to Mason. We had it when we were here in 2006. It was a little bit different, um, but we'll see a little bit of a dose of that. OK, so you you had to bring in some new players. Mm -hmm. Some of the names that we might be seeing on the uh, on the scoreboard, who, who should we be looking out for? You know, I was I was very fortunate. Um, the transfer market is not always um, nice to coaches that get their job. You know, April one. Yeah. Um, you know, especially at this level, there's a lot of you almost have to. Most coaches won't say it. I will. You almost have to take what you can get after you get your main one or two pieces. I was very very fortunate because I think we have um, we got a lot of depth, and I was able to get. I would say six or seven pieces that can really help us and that can play heavy minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I believe our first guy that we brought in was Amari Kelly, um, who was on a good NCAA team at UNC Wilmington, mm -hmm. um, a guy that started every single game for them, and they were very, very balanced. I, I don't see how he didn't average more than he did. He was around 9-6 and six in about 22 minutes. Um, he's been one of the most impressive guys that we've had all summer. Now, Wilmington, is that still Wayne right? Or is that a new um, coach there? No, nah, that's it's a, a new no, coach no, it's not Wayne Wright. No, 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 no. Because they 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 have a set offense that is just running around and Yeah, Wayne Wright yeah. was um I think I believe Wayne Wright might be at Clemson now as an okay. assistant. Okay. Or maybe even Michigan. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm All sorry. Right. I'm not not familiar with that former right. staff. All right. Um but we brought in Amari Kelly, who I recruited years ago while I was at La Tech, so that mm -hmm. relationship just kinda um blossomed into him transitioning for his fifth year and you know, he's got family in Fairfax, so that kinda worked itself out. Um, and I, th I believe the next one was uh, Darius Maddox, um, who's a local kid, um, played at Virginia Tech for two years. And, you know, last year, his third year, he had some personal um, things going on. And so he was kind of, you know, you know, 50 percent of the season he missed. Mm -hmm. um, but the year prior to that, he made almost 63s. And anybody that can make 63s for you in one of the best leagues in the country, you know, 
I got a, ch- a feeling that he's going to be pretty good right. in the A10. Right. Um, and then Jared Billups, who came from Siena, another uh, local DMV guy who's a more of a 3 and D defensive-minded, um, really a selfless basketball player. Like, he wants to guard the best player on the floor. Um, he, he looks like a cornerback, and I'm excited to see what he, he can bring to the table. Um, another piece, uh, Keyshawn Hall, who I think has got a chance at his position to be one of the better fours slash threes in the league. Um, he spent the year at UNLV. Oh, okay. um, he only played about 15 minutes a game, but he was at 6-4 and four and shot 50% from three. I saw him when I was at Ohio State while recruiting another kid because he's from Cleveland, Ohio. And I remember seeing him and just in my head saying, if this kid can lose some weight, like he's got a chance. <laughs> at that time, he was 280. Okay. He's now down to 230, so okay. it actually happened. <laughs> um, he's got a chance to be really good. And then we went and picked up some late pieces with, you know, Nico Pavretti, who's from uh, Central Michigan, shot blocker, defensive-minded. He's got two years left. Um, we got uh, Trey Wood late in the portal, just another guard that can kind of help you and give you some experience. And I'm um, just very excited about the kid, Baraka Koji, who we just picked up um, a couple weeks ago. Even though I can say it now, he was committed to us um, May 2nd. Um, you know, but he wanted to kind of play through his summer. He's 2024, 20, mm-hmm. and so he actually clashed up because he saw the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, I can't leave out, you know, the three guys that were um, on this team last year, you know, the three guys that stayed home, you know, Ronald Polite, who's got a chance to be um, an all-league point guard. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's playing for his third coach. And so, you know, my hat's off to him and Malik Henry as well for just kind of staying the course because in this day and age, it's so easy to jump in that portal. That's right. And for these two guys to kind of stay home for their third coach, you know, they're going to make jumps in, in, in their season and in, in their career and as well as uh, Devin Dinkins as well. Sounds great. Uh, I know those three well, and uh, I hope Malik, Malik, is a, Malik is a specimen. He is. And he is. Um, under the right circumstances, which is pretty much any time, he will give you 100%. I never like saying 110% because that's not humanly possible. Yeah. But he's out there giving you 100%. No, he, he's— um. You know, again, when I got the job and I started watching personnel, I'm watching film, and I'm like, why didn't this kid play more? But again, this is what happens when you have a guy like Josh Dora, who's yeah. one of the best players at his position in the league. It's hard. Yeah. And, you know, watching that film, I, I got excited about Malik. And once I got to know him from a personality standpoint and then some of the things he represents, you know, I'm excited about him. You make, a, you make a lot of interesting points when you talk about all the players on the team, all right? So— with the NIL and the ease and frequency with these student transfers, I mean, you did a, a really good job in amassing your team. Mm-hmm. But, you know, what do you think about NIL reform? Because, you know, in my point of view, and, I, and I, we had this conversation upstairs um, prior to us getting on air today. Whoever has the most money gets the best players, which is not what it should be about. It should be about the student athlete, not the athlete student. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, I think I'm, I'm I'm young enough to understand, <laughs> you know, how important, you know, NIL is. You know, it's it's unfortunate because people don't like to say the full word, name, image, and likeness, mm-hmm. which is and should be based off of, you know, how well you play, your production. Right. You know, I think about, you know, our run, and I wish NIL existed because, you know, we put the work in. Um, but we also didn't come to Mason because of NIL. We came to Mason because of the opportunity. That's right. And I think that gets lost in the translation um, in the day and age because the first question is, well, what can you, what can you give us? Um, and, and it does make our jobs a little bit harder. Um, but, you know, I think there's enough information now after year two where people are starting to understand the significant amount of um, screw-ups some of these kids have made in the decision in going somewhere just strictly for NIL. Again, it's all about production. It's all about how well you play, your brand. A lot of those things kind of work itself out organically right. if you're a good player. Um, but nonetheless, the portal is, there's a lot of kids in the portal. Um, and I'm a firm believer of, you know, at the end of the day, if you know enough, if you have enough relationships, you know, it's all about navigating through the guys that you want in your locker room. Well, you know, the dovetailing that is, you know, you're building a successful program. It requires putting so many pieces in place. People just think you're a basketball coach. Mm-hmm. Well, no. You're also engagement coordinator. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you have to be out in the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to also be somewhat entrepreneurial, getting and talking to 
big businesses to come in to talk, yeah, chat, chat your team up as well as chat you up so you can chat the university up. Mm-hmm. How, how, how do you think that's going to work for Tony Skin? I mean, what's the Tony Skin going to do to get himself more involved with the community and his players more involved with the community? I think it starts with different things like this. Anytime someone invites me somewhere, I, I'm not second-guessing it. Right. Um, you know, the engagement, the community of Fairfax, and just the visibility, you know, I've got to be able to do my part um, in, in marketing the university via our basketball program. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think there's... There's a lot of opportunity in Fairfax. You know, this is there's no football at George Mason. Um, there's no pro sports in Northern Virginia or in Virginia in general. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, organically we become, you know, the show in town. And just finding different ways to tie into those roots and bringing all that together, I think that's the, um, you know, that's the goal. And I'm willing to put myself in front of that. Well, I see you doing great work so far, young man. I really appreciate uh, you even taking this time out in your day to come chat with me. I mean, you, there's a lot of other things you could be doing. Um, you stood me up for lunch, by the way. This went from lunch to, to, to this podcast. You well, st- we can always go to lunch. Okay, all right. Just making sure you didn't forget. I don't stand anybody <laughs> up for lunch. I just want to let you know. That's, the, that, that's one of the pure things in life that I have to do is eat some lunch. Yeah, we got to reschedule that. We, we got to do that. We yeah, got to do sure. that. And we also got to get on the basketball court because, you know— you. you Doing that move on Harden doesn't mean anything to me because I just stand out there and shoot threes. Whatever. If you want to, if you want to go there, we can go there. We can go there. I mean, I went, I go there with anybody. I don't mind. I mean, you know, you take pictures and photographs and say, "Look at the old man shooting basketball." I mean, I might only get up about a half an inch off the ground, but it still goes with in. The, with the numbers you gave upstairs, <laughs> that's right. I'm looking forward to it. All right, all right. So, when does the schedule come out? Um, so the schedule actually uh, should be out here in the next couple of hours. Okay. Um, we just finalized our last um, opponent just the other day, and contracts are being signed. So the schedule should be out, you know, hopefully in the next day or two. How many, how many, how many um, out of conference games do you have this year? So you? we're gonna have out of conference, I believe, um, obviously thirteen out okay. of conference. Okay. Um, you'll play eighteen in conference. Okay. Um, we'll have eight home games, and uh, an MTE multi-team right. event. Right. We'll also go down to Tennessee to play them on their home floor. Um, we'll go down to uh, Tulane and play them as well. Okay. And then we'll return a game um, at Toledo. Good. That kind of makes up our Good. non-conference schedule. And conference schedule has not um, has not been out, put out yet. Okay, so what's the best way to get tickets to these games when they're available? Yeah, I mean, obviously, even now in, in August, season tickets are on sale now. Um, you know, we've got many plans and single game tickets. They'll be available a little bit later on this fall. Um, you can call the ticket office um, or just go on GoMason.com for more information. Um, we've got a couple of events that are, you know, in the works. Um, Mason Madness on October 13 um, at Eagle Bank is free. Um, and then, obviously, first game is uh, November 6. All right. Well, listen, listen. I'm going to be at every game, like I, and I will not say a word to you during the game or even after the game. <laughs> but I do want to say welcome to back to the DMV. Uh, we are looking so forward to seeing your team do their thing. And I, I just want to say thank you and uh, to the, to this to, to all of the folks here in Fairfax County, uh, this is Tony Skin's coming out party. Uh, he's got a great team, great great young men on his team, and uh, this is my edition of the Connect with County Leaders podcast, and uh, it's featuring Tony Skin, and I just want to say thank you, and I hope everybody enjoys listening to our show today. So, Tony, no, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having Appreciate me. You. This was good. This was pretty cool, man. I'd love to come back anytime. Well, we'll do that after the season. Okay. For sure. Okay. And... Again, we are here to partner with you. You you tell us what you need. We're going to try and get it for you because we want your success and we want George Mason's success. But wait a minute. Before I go, <laughs> I just want to show this is the only thing. I've never been on any show and had any person that I've known that had their own head. bobblehead. What's up with that? That's, that don't look like. That even look like you. That's classic, right there, man. man. You, we have a gentleman that has every one of your players that played on that team. He has. He's got bob, all of them. One a piece, or does he one have piece. an extra to give me? Because I don't even have that. You don't have that. Well, you can't have this yeah, one. Yeah, of course I, I, I can't. So I, I, I asked for the second one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna have to do, and I'm gonna tell uh, President Washington that we're gonna have to do a Tony Skin bobblehead redo retro. Bobbleheads yeah. back in George Mason that's on the a, Connect that's with that's County a, Leaders. That's a pretty good. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind that. Just a little bit more hair on his head. That's all. All right, brother. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you again for listening to Connect with County Leaders. Coach Skin, thank you once again. I'm Brian Hill. And that ends the show for today. Yeah.
This has been the Connect with County Leaders podcast with Fairfax County Executive Brian Hill. To listen to other great Fairfax County podcasts, visit fairfaxcounty.gov slash podcasts. And for additional audio content, tune in to Fairfax County Government Radio at fairfaxcounty.gov slash radio. For more Fairfax County news and information, visit News Center online at fairfaxcounty.gov slash news. The Connect with County Leaders podcast is produced by the Fairfax County, Virginia government. <laughs>